Well, this is going to be a short video because I got no reading done at all last month, uh, which is to say I read six books, which, okay, it's kind of like a guy with 12% body fat, you know, saying, oh, I'm so fat right now. Um, no. But considering the fact that it's like literally my full-time job to read books and talk about the books that I read, um, only reading six books means I'm kind of bad at my job. <laughs> but they're all pretty damn good, and especially the first one and the second one. And uh, so let's just get right into the first one. The first book I read last month was The Know-It-All by A.J. Jacobs. He's known for doing these large book projects. So, you know, this one, you know, some dude, him, uh, reading the Encyclopedia Britannica from A to Z. He had a previous book called The Year of Living Biblically, uh, where he tries to live according to every single thing that the Bible says to do and not to do, and even the stuff that contradicts the other stuff. <laughs> And it's like that book was really, really good too. Uh, but it was like a, like a year-long project, obviously. And uh, another one he's, uh, he's got uh, called Thanks a Thousand, where he, uh, where he goes out and uh, he tries to thank personally every single person that was involved in uh, bringing him his morning cup of coffee. And uh, so I really enjoyed that book too. And this one's more of the same. So it's, it's like an extended uh, project of him like sitting down with the Encyclopedia Britannica A to Z. It's a lot more interesting <laughs> than... Like, like the premise would suggest, and he fills the book with all these sort of uh, episodes and stuff like that. Like he meets uh, uh, the guy from Jeopardy, Alex Trebek. Uh, he goes and like uh, interviews him. What else? He becomes a contestant on um, Who Wants to Be a Millionaire, and uh, just a whole bunch of hilarious episodes of, of him reading the encyclopedia and explaining his project to friends and sort of hoping that you know people uh, wouldn't ask him about stuff that he hadn't gotten to yet. And he drops all these great lines throughout. Like there's one, he's at like a dinner party and just uh, he, he said something like awkward and whatever and he says I'm not even sure what that means and I'm the one who said it uh, just stuff like that it, he's super funny and uh, so it's worth reading uh, for sure the second book I read last month uh, is called Real Help by Ayodeji Awasika and I do not want to admit how many times I recorded that last two seconds of the video uh, it shouldn't be that hard it, it, it's it's like a simple enough name I just couldn't get it uh, but anyway the, the author sent me the book to read for free and to share it on my Instagram and I thought it was amazing and I'm actually doing a full like a more complete uh, breakdown of the book for the Stairway to Wisdom because I thought there was so much great stuff in there it's everything you need to sort of move intelligently in the modern world but it's got all sorts of like really great observations in it uh, like this one he says that if you understood the unfathomable power of compounding and embraced it you'd behave much differently and I think that's really important to understand. Uh, compound, like compounding, like compound interest, um, everything, and leverage. Geez, leverage is another huge concept that not many people understand. And if they did, they would live totally differently. And uh, there's actually an, uh, like an excellent book that goes through um, this uh, leverage. Uh, the whole concept of leverage. It's called The Almanac of Naval Ravikant. And surprise, surprise, I featured it on uh, The Stairway to Wisdom. Uh, you can find it in, uh, in the video description below. Uh, but in real help, the whole book is about resisting the sort of downward pull of, you know, average people, average society. You know, like uh, just everyone's trying to sort of like sort of flatten you out and to resist that uh, it takes real strength and uh, it's uh, it's something that I've had to do and when everyone just almost literally everyone tries to not and not even like consciously bring you down but sort of uh, make you more like them make you more average sort of you know regress to the mean and uh, you know you really have to fight against that it takes a lot of effort and uh, it takes not just effort uh, but a lot of effort over a long enough period of time and uh, and like I said this book doesn't give any sort of easy answers he's like this is what you have to do like it's possible uh, you know I've done it like I didn't have like all these advantages uh, but I had all this stuff working against me and probably so do you uh, it's gonna be hard but you can do it and at the end this is what you get and uh, yeah I, I really really enjoyed this one the next book that I finished was called The Secret to Success by uh, Eric Thomas. And uh, I listened to this one on Audible, uh, which I'm a big fan of. I listen to lots of audiobooks now, uh, way more than I used to. And uh, you can uh, sign up for uh, Audible uh, for free. Get a free book in the uh, description. Uh, just find a link for that. It'll be like clearly displayed down there. Um, and this one actually won a bunch of, uh, a, a bunch, at least one um, award for like the performance of it. His style is, is much more sort of over the top uh, than anything you, you'll find from me. Uh, he's closer to like a Tony Robbins seminar than me, who's kind of just kind of more laid back. 
Um, but I, I told, like, I've been listening to his stuff, watching his YouTube videos for a long, long time, and uh, his story is pretty intense too. So he was a, uh, he was like homeless as a teenager in Detroit, and uh, living out of his car. So in like Detroit, I mean, if you've ever been there, like, you don't even want to leave your car in Detroit without you in it. But with you in the car, like, that's, <laughs> that's like a danger level that's just stupid. And, uh, he like extricated himself from that and uh, he got his uh, GED and then he taught like other people how to get their GEDs and sort of, you know, take a step forward uh, in life. Again, when a lot of people um, and like society in general uh, acting against their interests, uh, like we talked about um, in the last book. And uh, so he was able to help all of these other people and uh, he actually uh, uh, ended up with a PhD in something. <laughs> I forget uh, exactly, but it's a goddamn PhD. So, you know, starting from homeless teenager living in his car to PhD helping millions of people, um, I think that's pretty damn cool. And uh, even though his like style is a little bit different than mine, I absolutely just uh, just tore through this book. And uh, it's really good. Like I said, it, it won a couple of like performance awards. Um, I highly recommend it. Three really quick things that also stood out to me and it's just, it's so worth um, spending just a few seconds uh, thinking about these. Uh, one, the first thing he said was that choosing your friends is a matter of life and death. And, you know, like, that's true generally, uh, but especially for him. I mean, like, if he, like, you know, homeless streets of Detroit picked the wrong friends, that, you know, directly leads to his death. Um, so, like, for him, choosing his friends was a matter of life and death. And uh, it might be less so uh, for people like you and I. I mean, I don't know, like, who, like where you are, um, but, you know, this is so true. And another thing he says um, is that in order to hold someone down, you must stay down with them. And the last thing, um, and this is this is when he's talking about being welcomed into his local church and had uh, like positive role models start to enter his life. And uh, what he says is that they were more concerned with making me feel welcome than they were with the kind of clothes I was wearing. The next one is the only physical book that I read <laughs> uh, last month. The rest of them were like on Audible or on my phone. Uh, but this one is Unstoppable uh, by Craig Ballantyne. And again, the author sent me this one, uh, Perks of Having Like 100,000 Instagram Followers. Um, and I really liked it. So uh, it's, uh, it's about anxiety, uh, mostly, uh, which I do not personally struggle with all that much. Um, you know, sure, I mean, the difficult periods in everybody's life. Uh, but I, I'm not anxious. I don't, you know, take medication or anything like that. Um, and uh, but I still read this one. I still wanted to read it because he's also like a highly successful entrepreneur, business owner, and uh, he's still very, very active, um, just in the social media landscape. And like when you know, when you've got someone like that, there's something that you can learn from them. And you know, obviously, this book is like packed with uh, with his insights from like his sort of high level um, as this entrepreneur. Uh, who's achieved all these great things despite his anxiety. So you've got a bunch of like business strategy disguised as a book about anxiety, uh, which is pretty cool. And But also, if you do have anxiety, like this is the book that is going to help you out quite a bit. Um, and again, all, all the books mentioned in this video are down in the description. Uh, but what Craig uh, says and his sort of main, uh, he's got a bunch of like, you know, catchphrases, but this is one of them. He says, action beats anxiety, motion beats meditation, work beats worry. One of his main messages, though, is that you can't hang out with negative people and expect to live a positive life. And, uh, you know, he says that several times um, in the book in different ways. And uh, it's just so incredibly important to understand. It's so true. Like, I, I found that, you know, in my own life. And uh, one of the things he says, too, is that, you know, there are, you know, there are good people out there and they want to help you. And uh, that, I've also found that to be to be um, amazingly true in my own life. There are good people everywhere. Um, you know, people generally want to help you. And uh, they're also nice if you're nice first. Um, I've, I've rarely uh, encountered someone who's like mean to me if I start out nice. Um, it's like that first interaction is, is key. So uh, anyway, I really, really enjoyed this book. It's not one that I would have uh, bought myself because um, I don't struggle with anxiety. Um, but I'm definitely glad um, that I read it. All right, so this next one, number five, is an absolute classic. It is The Art of War by Sun Tzu. And uh, again, I mean, I'm not going to, you know, invade the Han Dynasty, um, but I recognize that this is an absolute classic. Uh, people like Robert Greene, whose uh, books I've 
absolutely love, loved and uh, who I respect a whole lot. Um, he's read Art of War a bunch of times. Everybody who's sort of like interested in sort of politics and strategy and business, um, they've all read The Art of War, so I had to. And it turns out there's a whole bunch of great stuff in there. Uh, for example, he who exercises no forethought but makes light of his opponents is sure to be captured by them. It's not just useful if you're like invading another country. It's useful everywhere in a variety of situations. And then there's also this one. If the enemy leaves a door open, you must rush in. Anybody who's interested in business or who runs a business themselves, you know, etc., or even sort of like anything like that, like you're going to read a quote like this or an entire book like this and immediately think of ways to apply it. And that's really where the rewards come from, um, combining stuff that's not immediately obvious. And uh, when other people do see that, they, al they also sort of like see what you're doing and they're like, I didn't think of it that way. And uh, you become valuable to them by being able to do this. And uh, so reading uh, books like The Art of War and even, you know, Unstoppable, uh, if you don't, like, even if you don't suffer from anxiety, uh, these sorts of inputs are really going to help you out in, uh, in a lot of different areas of your life. And uh, so the next uh, book, the last one, uh, number six, it's called The Dharma Bums by uh, Jack Kerouac. And uh, years ago, I loved um, On the Road. Uh, it's one of my favorite books of all time, actually, and I really should read that one again. It just got me excited about living, and like that's really the best thing that you could say about that book and about any book in general. Like it gets you excited about uh, being alive and active and getting out there and just like enjoying yourself. This book is about listening to yourself and figuring out for yourself what's actually important. And uh, you know, I wouldn't try and make too much sense out of it. Uh, there's a whole lot of hitchhiking in this book and mountain climbing and just like road trip all over the country it's like he goes all over the place and I wouldn't try and like like it, it's loosely autobiographical so it's like not like don't try and make too much sense out of it basically he's got some excellent sort of uh, quotes that come out of nowhere um, I'll read just like a couple of my favorites uh, right here one is when you get to the top of a mountain keep climbing and I knew that the sound of silence was everywhere and therefore everything everywhere was silence and there's one that's not quite Zen like but I thought it was pretty funny there are more horses asses than horses in this world. <laughs> Less profound, but still really funny. And then one more uh, that I loved. It sort of came out of nowhere, and I think this this might be the last line of the book, or it's it's near the end. Uh, he says, "The vision of the freedom of eternity was mine forever." If you haven't read any Jack Kerouac yet, I would suggest starting with On the Road. I think that's a superior book, and I think that came before as well. I'm not entirely sure. But, yeah, I mean, if you like that one, you might enjoy this one too, except I didn't enjoy it as much as, uh, as On the Road. But I will say that it's very important to become at peace inside your own mind. Like, you have to live there 24-7. And maybe you can't control your mind all the time, but you have some some limited but very real control over your own mind. And the more that you learn how to control your own mind, the more you're going to be able to control other things out there in the wider world, the outside external world. And uh, that's a very, very important skill to develop. And you do that by doing hard things, by reading books, for sure, by training very hard physically, whether that's at the gym or you know some other uh, challenging, demanding sport. Uh, really, you have to challenge your own mind in all these different ways to sort of hit it from all angles. And uh, just when you strengthen your mind, like it, it, it will have cascading positive effects um, throughout your entire life. And I mean, we talked about leverage um, earlier. Leverage is basically control over like, or sort of like a, like an input, like a small input that has a huge result. So when you gain control over your mind, you know, that's one thing. That's your mind is the only thing that you can reasonably control. But when you leverage your own mind, a whole lot of other things in your life start to go more right. And uh, yeah. Uh, that's all I have to say about that. Um, however, uh, if you do want to uh, start really making a commitment to reading more books and getting more reading done, um, I have absolutely my best tip for reading more books, and uh, it's in this video right here. This one right here. And uh, it's uh, my absolute best tip for reading 52 books in a single year. So with that, I want to thank you for watching, and I'll see you in the next video. And uh, hey, happy reading. To do something great, sacrifice is a part of it. It's just the start of it. You can't start to quit. You have to harness this, cause energy is bliss. And when I swing, I miss, but then I swing and hit. So I'ma swing again, and I'ma swing again.